our November series, The F Word. Last week, we looked at a text or passage in the Bible of two very prominent uh, leaders in, our, in the Bible where they had a big argument and that made it them to part ways. But one of the things that we learned were that they talked about it. They worked it out. They, they didn't just avoid each other. They talked about it and realized that they needed to part ways. Um, this today, we're going to look into a, a, a other side, another topic of forgiveness. I hope you stay tuned and we would, so that we can go through it. A theme called Grace of Forgiveness. I hope you stay tuned. Our scripture reading for today is in Genesis 45. Chapter 45 Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence! So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him, because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed, and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years there will not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now, hurry back to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and all you have, I will provide for you there, because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt, and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. Then. He threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him weeping, and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. Let's pray together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and your grace. Thank you for, for this opportunity where we can come to your word and look into these difficult topics of, of forgiveness, different aspects, things that we we just need to learn to live with. Um, therefore, Lord, I pray that you will be with us today and help us to really learn and hear what you have to say through your word today. In your home we pray. Amen. Sometime, sometime in our lives, there, was, there came a time where we, we were really hurt by people. Um, or we hurt them. But it was a time where you just wanted an apology an explanation. Why did you hurt me so much? Why did you do it? Um, what did I do to deserve this pain? A few years ago, I was engaged. I really believe that God said that this was the man for me. And a few months before our wedding, everything ended. I didn't know why. I didn't have an explanation. And I really wanted to know what did I do wrong? What did, why God, why did you allow this in my life? This story of Joseph, his brothers sold them for money. Um, they threw him in a pit and they said that to their father that he was dead. Sometimes it was so hard for him because he was thrown into prison. He went to a different country. He didn't have any friends or family. 
he was dead according to his family. I believe that some a part of Joseph's life, he just wanted to know why did they do it? I don't know if they explained to him when they sold him or uh, announced him dead or thrown him there or left him there in the desert. They didn't give him an explanation. And years later, we come to Genesis 45, and here he makes himself known to his brothers. His brothers come to him, and they um, realize that this is his their brother that has this important role in in Egypt. He, if Joseph wasn't there, they came to ask for food and grace from from this from the Egyptians. So I wonder what went through the minds of his brothers when they realized that it was their brother. In for early in the, in the verses, we see that Joseph, were, he was crying to the Lord because he realized that he had so much hurt. He had so much pain of didn't understand what or why, why did he allow this? Why did he bring his brothers to him? But he talked to God about it. So when his brothers came, he said to them, I'm not angry with you. It's not your fault. It was God's it's part of God's plan. And you know that, that there were verses in there are verses in the Bible that say, I know I have all plans of prosper for you. Um, I do not have plans to harm you, but just to prosper you. So you know that there are plans that God has for you. You know that he had a bigger plan. So at that moment, when everything happened, you couldn't see God's plan clearly like Joseph did. But here in, in chapter 45, here he was faced with his brothers eye to eye, and he needed to tell them that you are forgiven. This teaches us that sometimes what you've done towards others come and haunt you. It it hurts you. It allows you to to relive a time which you wish you forgotten about. If we hurt some people, when you see that person like owing them money or um, borrowed something from them and you never returned it, you avoid that person. And when you see them, or when you see then the money or your salary or the object you borrowed, and every time you see it, you were reminded of the guilt that you had a responsibility towards that person as a forgiveness. But as a um, coping mechanism, we, we are more angry than that person. So we try to avoid them. But he, Joseph, and his brothers were faced, come to uh, in contact, and they realize what they have done. And Joseph said, don't worry, I have forgiven you and I will help you because they had famine in their country at that time. And he said, I will help you. But first I want to meet my, see my father. But here it realizes that he showed the grace of forgiveness. He showed them that I have forgiven you. And this is what we as Christians as uh, as we don't know what to do or how to handle uh, conflict or, or forgiveness, he showed grace to them by showing kindness to them. He showed them that it's, I don't deserve grace, but I'm giving to you grace, which I desire from, as well. This is what we need to do, friends. We need to show kindness not, we usually say that we want to be the better person or show, make them be so kind that they make, we make them nauseous or um, irritate them just as an act of revenge. But here we learn from jo Joseph that he is actually very pure in his act of kindness, showing kindness, showing grace to his brothers by telling them it's not your fault. I have forgiven you. Sometimes you don't even have to say I've forgiven you, but showing them the grace of forgiveness. The second part of this 
a lesson that we've learned in this text is that as Joseph said, that it's not your fault. It was part of God's plan. As we, a lot of us, face a lot of difficulties growing up, and when you grow up as an adult, you realize that I have all of this baggage. I have all this. I couldn't have done this because of, of my childhood. And, and sometimes we need to realize that God allowed things in our lives because he has a plan, like Joseph said. But friends, it's really difficult if you need to realize that God allowed these things. In these days, I talked to a friend and she told me that she was in a car accident and she was just like, God, why did you allow this to happen? When your field burned down or like my, my history with my ex fiance asking God, why did you allow it to go so far? And I realized that as Joseph, we need to forgive God for what he has done, of what he has allowed. Sometimes we, we blame, we blame shift. We are angry to people um, for what they have caused. But as Christians, as we know that God has a bigger plan, we actually need to go sit down and say, God, I know you have a plan for my life, but this was really hard to deal with. And I need to forgive God. It sounds a bit strange, but some people hate God because of what they, he has allowed in their lives. You can see in the story of God's Not Dead, the first movie, that he said, God does not exist. But it's not, it's because of the hurt that, that happened in his life. And he knew that God has a plan for his life. And therefore, he realized, said that there were no God. Friends, did we sit and actually realize that this thing that God allowed in my life really hurt me? And I actually need to say or realize that the problem, it's, it's not me, it's not what my friends did, but it's what God allowed. And to sit and realize that I know now, I realize that God has a bigger plan, but it hurt me so much that it felt like I was paralyzed. Some of the choices that we make, it's not according to God's plan. And sometimes God puts a roadblock or a hump or an accident in front of us just to get you back where he wants you to be. Almost like a GPS when you go and you need to, and it says recalculating, and you need to go back to where God wants you, on the direction he wants you to go. And it hurts. It takes time. And then we realize then we blame God, but actually it was a choice that we made. It's choices that I thought that this was my fiancé, this was my husband-to-be. But God said, wait, wait a bit. He protects you from things that you do not know of. And that's why he, the process is so painful of choices we made, but sometimes we just, we are born into difficult circumstances as well. And we need to take us time and realize that, phew, this one really hurt me, God. And I forgive you because I know you have a plan for my life. Brothers and sisters, forgiveness is, is hard. We look for apologies, but sometimes we just need to realize that we need to go to God and say that this thing really was it difficult for me to forgive my brother or forgive my sister or my friends for what they have done and actually just say that I am sure I'm choosing grace or forgiveness and to show you kindness and to realize that 
God allowed this for a certain reason in my life to protect me, to make me stronger or whatever the reason may be so that you can be the person that you are today. So that the story that he has, the plans that he has for you can work out. And to realize that it's not because of the that people, those people, but it was part of God's plan. And to go back to the one with the plans and tell him, I forgive you. I forgive you, Lord, for allowing this pain in my life. But I trust you that you will work out things for the good, like like for Joseph and for the Israelites. Because if it wasn't for Joseph, he could have he wouldn't have invited all the Israelites to live in Egypt, to work there so that they don't have to die from famine, to live there to he it, if it wasn't for the dreams that Joseph interpreted it wouldn't have been as successful as God worked it out. Therefore, we need to go back to the one who has the plans, the one that that will make things work for the good and be patient for what he has planned in store for us. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can come to you because you are our Father, because we need you, Heavenly Father. We as we de are dealing with this difficult topics this month of forgiveness, I pray, Lord, as we just realize that sometimes we look for apologies, but it's not what is you expect from us. We need to accept what happened and show kindness. Forgiveness is, is painful. It's, it's tough. That's why you did it. That's why you had to come and die on the cross for us. Because you have forgiven us. It, was, it took so much from you. And therefore, Lord, I pray that you will be with us now. Help us to see that, it's, that you allow pain and suffering and, and all these tribulations in our lives. Not because you don't love us, but because it's part of of the plans that you have for us. Not to harm us, but just for a hopeful future. Therefore, Lord, help us to go back to you and know that our, our uh, fight is not against flesh and blood, but because of the things that's in the air. Therefore, Lord, that we know that we need to go back to you because this is greater than us. Lord, we come to you and we pray that you will be with us. Help us, learn us, teach us to forgive and to show forgiveness by loving and acting kind towards those that hurt us. But Lord, if we have hurt people, help us to show us what we need to do. If we need to go back and ask for forgiveness, to show grace, of forgiveness that we don't deserve. In your home we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We see you next week here on the CapNet program on Mondays evenings at 7 p.m. God bless. In the stillness of who you are, there I find peace. In the stillness of who you are, I see your. Stillness of you.
The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We see you next week here on the CapNet program on Mondays evenings at 7 p.m. God bless.